from Sam Strings Violin Shop. Today, I'm going to discuss with you how I help students and adults find the correct size of cello. When a customer comes in to get size for a cello, the first thing we do is welcome them to our cello showroom. Then I ask them, please, take a seat. This might seem kind of obvious because typically we do sit down when we play the cello, but really what I'm looking for is their cello sitting posture. I believe this goes hand in hand with finding the right size for that individual. These are the things I'm looking for. First, I look to make sure their feet are flat on the ground. This helps prevent tension in their knees, their hips, their shoulders, even their neck. Then, I look to see if the height of the chair is appropriate for them. We do have an adjustable chair in our cello showroom that can go up and down and even tilt forward or stay flat. What I'm looking for is that their legs are going at a slight angle down. You can start with 90 degrees if you prefer and then go down just a hair from there. But if the chair is too tall for the student, then the knees can be going down very low. If the chair is too tall for that person's legs, their knee will be pointing up in the air. We want to avoid that. That makes it difficult to size. Also, it's uncomfortable to play that way. Then you want to make sure that the hips, the shoulders, and the head are all in good alignment. These are all prerequisites for getting a good cello size and fit. Finally, we can get to sizing the instrumentalist. Now at this point, you might know that the student should be either a quarter or a half, or a half or three quarter, but you're not quite sure which. This is how I figure that out. I will take the cello, which I think is the closest fit, and I'll place it in between the knees of the student against their left leg. Now at this point, oftentimes students will grab the cello, lift it right and close to their face, and twist their head. You want to take the cello back from them at this point, find that same centered posture, and gently place it again in the same location. Now the cello will be touching the sternum area, roughly. Everyone's body is slightly different, but in that general vicinity. Also, the peg is going to be somewhere behind the left ear. For me, it's about the ear lobe. It might be slightly higher for other people. The reason why I put this location is because we're looking for our left arm to more comfortably fit at first position. If the cello is too high, the student will often raise their shoulder to get there. We want to avoid that. So I start from the top and go down. So here we are. The cello is touching me in the sternum. The peg is around my earlobe, and I'm able to find first position comfortably. Now, if the cellist has a very short torso and the cello is too big, what's going to happen is their arm is not going to be able to get to the bridge very easily. We typically play here. But if the cello is too long for me, I'm going to be having to stretch out with a straight arm like this, causing tension and not getting good tone quality. So the student will end up playing over the fingerboard. That will tell you that, oh, the cello is actually too long for them. We need a shorter cello. Every teacher has a different preference and recommendation for how big of a cello their students should be using, even the length of bow they use. So in regards to the location of where you place this bow and where you're getting good tone quality, oftentimes students cannot reach the tip of the bow and play near the bridge on the A string. That's not uncommon at all. Um, typically, I would tell a student just stop where your arm feels comfortable. As long as they can get to the close to the bridge for most of the bow, that's good enough for me. You now have determined if the student's arm length is long enough to play the cello they're using. Now we need to see if the left hand is also matching. The first thing we look at is the length of our fingers, but just as importantly is the flexibility of those fingers. When you play a musical instrument such as a cello or a violin, you gain more dexterity, flexibility, coordination, and so forth. But at the beginning, sometimes it's not all there. So this is an important thing to check. With a student who already knows how to play, it's a little bit easier. Typically what I'll have them do is play a D major scale. And the reason I do that is because it's an extended hand position in first position, which is about as big as you're ever going to need to be for the cello, typically. So if they can do that with no discomfort and definitely no pain, then I'm usually not too worried about them using the larger size cello. However, with new students, this can be a bit more tricky to gauge. Once you've established what you think is an appropriate size instrument for the student, then you can double check to make sure their left hand is not too small for that instrument. It's important to already have tapes on the cello to use as a guide. This is the first and fourth finger in first position. Rush, can you make a C shape with your left hand like you're holding a water bottle? Good. Now, make sure that when they do that, they keep their thumb nice and soft. If they squeeze, 
and it contorts their hand. We don't want that. Now let's go back to that nice round C shape. Beautiful. Now we're going to take this shape and put it on the D string rush. Okay, so what we're looking for is that with minimal effort, their fingers can reach between the first and fourth finger tapes. If in the relaxed state, they don't quite reach there, that's okay as long as, once again, they have a little bit of flexibility and they can reach. If they're really struggling, you might check their thumb to see if their thumb is squeezing. If the thumb is squeezing, once again, it's going to contract and contort the fingers. If you still have trouble reaching between there, it might be that they need to try a smaller instrument. What do you think about this, Rush? Okay.